This Fleet Equipment unscripted interview is presented by Hendrickson, a leading manufacturer of heavy-duty suspension systems and components to the global commercial transportation industry. Visit hendrickson-intl.com to learn more. Hey everyone, Jason Morgan, Content Director for Fleet Equipment. Welcome to Fleet Equipment Unscripted. We're at the TMC show in New Orleans. We're at the International Booth. They have their S13 powertrain that's being delivered to customers. We're going to stop in the booth and get a walk around of the engine, transmission, after treatment system, dive into the technology that's powering the truck, uh, and see what we can learn. So we're here at TMC, you got the S13. This is just now rolling out the customers, right? You've done your first customer deliveries. Uh, walk me around the engine, the transmission, tell me what we got going on here. Absolutely. Well, so we're really excited to be here at TMC with the new S13 integrated powertrain. Um, this is a brand new powertrain that is a direct result of our new partnership with Trayton. So Trayton being the commercial vehicle branch of Volkswagen. Um, and this is really a brainchild of that new partnership. And so what you see here is a engine an after treatment and a transmission solution all designed together to do their responsible tasks so as you look at the engine you look at a clean sheet design that goes back to the days of let's rethink how we can make the engine be an engine again and you do things like eliminate complexity simplify things that are still required on there uh, but it all starts off with a dual overhead cam design where we are increasing the compression ratio inside that combustion so that you are actually burning more of the fuel in the cylinder where diesel fuel should be burnt. So as we increase compression, you're increasing combustion temperature. And when you look at the two byproducts between when you have diesel uh, fuel combusting, you have soot and NOx. With this solution, we are dramatically reducing the amount of soot, but we have a high level of NOx that we're gonna have to deal with down the stream. That's okay because we now have an after treatment that's designed to deal with that. But when you look at when we are having a more complete burn of the fuel in the cylinder, what you see is the elimination of some of the components, things like the EGR cooler, completely eliminated from the system. Um, you look at the fuel pump pressures, we're dropping those from 36,000 PSI down to 26,000 PSI. So roughly 33% less parasitic losses on the engine. You look at things like a fixed geometry turbo. We've simplified that as well. Variable geometry turbos are great. They're amazing pieces of technology, but they're complex, they break, and they're very expensive when they do break. We go with a simplified wastegate style turbo, and that allows you to have a simplified, more reliable component. You do still see a little bit of EGR here on the front. We're calling that hot gas recirculation. The only time this is ever used is for periods of cold starts or long periods of idle. Uh, other than that, 100% of your exhaust is flowing downstream, going straight into that turbo. You know, one thing on the after treatment thing, I know uh, it's kind of just been a, a a long sticking service point for, for fleets, right? How does uh, evolving it to this point, uh, this point uh, help uh, reliability and reduction in service? Sure, so when you look at what an EGR cooler is doing, it's all about trying to control your levels of NOx being produced in that combustion process. And what you're doing is you're introducing 20% roughly dirty air back into the cylinder. And that's things like carbon and soot that's gunking up the inside of the engine, but also sending all of that waste downstream as well. So by eliminating that, you clean everything up and you're eliminating those failure points for fleets. If you look at the cost of an EGR cooler, that's a $2,000, $2,500 repair just for the part itself. And then you factor in labor and the added downtime. So by simplifying that and eliminating it, you're going to make the fleets uh, have a little bit more peace of mind there. Let's talk about the other part that makes the engine actually stay compliant with the EPA. Perfect. So you have the engine doing engine things you have the after treatment now to clean up the mess. And what we're doing with that is we're utilizing two doses of DEF to then treat those higher NOx levels that we talked about at the beginning. So your first dose of DEF takes place right outside the turbo. So there's a doser on the back side here along with the NOx sensor to measure how much NOx is coming down the pipe. Gets evaporated in through this evaporator here to then go downstream into our after treatment box. So now as you look at the dual stage after treatment, this is really what allows the engine to just be an engine again. And so we already talked about the first dose of DEF that's taking place upstream. Now it comes into the after treatment, which if you look at where this is oriented on the chassis, this is directly behind those passenger steps. Okay. So you take off eight bolts and you have access to this entire side panel. Oh, wow. okay. So as the exhaust comes in, it hits its first stage SCR. That's where the majority of your NOx reduction is taking place. It then hits a DPF right here. So right behind these four bolts is your DPF. Pop those off, you can actually replace that DPF very simply. You can even service that first SCR as well. So it's actually a very serviceable after treatment. Our second dose of DEF will take place right here after the DPF. This doser is also serviceable along with all the sensors. There's a mixing tube that goes the length of the box. 
therefore we're evaporating our second dose of DEF and that's going to also be serviceable and be able to be cleaned out with a pressure washer attachment. So if you have bad DEF, you get some crystallization in there, you can actually go about cleaning that without having to replace the entire box. The final two components of the after treatment are really here and here, which are two more SCR catalysts that are in parallel. Those are welded into the box itself, but that's what completes the entire process. Now, as you go through that, there is still one component that isn't being mentioned, and that's a DOC. So the diesel oxidation catalyst has also been removed from the system. So that means that you're never gonna be dosing fuel into the exhaust. So you don't have to waste fuel trying to re uh, regen the system. So, and maybe you mentioned it here, maybe I missed, but how do you, what, what enables you to remove the DOC? So again, we go back to this all being part of a system, right? And if you go back to the clean burn combustion with that higher compression, you have that super high level of NOx, that's the magic ingredient that allows us to eliminate that. So what's happening there is you're changing the chemistry where soot converts to ash. So rather than seeing in conventional diesel systems where you need 500 or 600 degrees Celsius, yeah. you can actually get that soot to convert to ash at around 300 degree, degrees Celsius, thanks in part to our higher NOx concentration. Oh, wow. okay. So therefore you're eliminating another complexity and component there. The final piece of it is the new T14 transmission. Yep. So the T14, just like the other components, it's a clean sheet design, designed to be an automated transmission. 14 speeds with a 26.7 to one overall ratio coverage, which means that you're gonna deliver superior drivability on the bottom end while still delivering an overdrive experience on the top end. The way that we're gonna be gearing this though, in the chassis, and if you look at the truck behind us, this has a 215 rear axle ratio. Okay. So we're gearing it as if it's a direct drive transmission, right. but whereas some of the other uh, transmissions out there may have locked out overdrive, we're keeping overdrive functional in this transmission. And what we're doing with that is by gearing it with 215, we'll be cruising down the road at 80,000 pounds at 65 miles per hour at around 1200 RPMs. But when we're light or we're empty or we're bobtail, we don't need that additional cruise grade ability. So now we can flex into 14th and now we can cruise at 65 miles per hour at 950 or even lower. So this allows ultra low cruise speeds of the engine to deliver better fuel economy. And what weight do you, what's the max weight you, you can be at to get that 950 RPM? So the weight rating on the transmission is going to be around 242,000 pounds on highway. Okay. So well over most of your traditional applications. Yeah. Um, more so than anything, what's going to limit you from that low RPM cruise rating is going to be the weight rating of the axles. Oh, okay. So for example, on this setup, we have the Meritor 14X HE high efficiency lube. Um, that allows you to get those really uh, fast rear axle ratios, but that is going to limit your GCW to around 90,000 pounds. Right. So you're going to be limited from that aspect. Right. But what's great about this is you can still gear it for that overdrive operation. So 264 and 279 can still be utilized to still operate the transmission and hit those higher weight ratings. What kind of intelligence goes into optimizing the shift points? I mean, this is a new transmission here in the market. How are, how are you doing that? So this is where the brilliance of integrating in with our engine and the entire system comes to play. So we have not only integrated our optimized shift strategies in the transmission for either economy, performance, or performance plus, but we're now able to integrate better with our functionality on predictive cruise control and adaptive cruise control to deliver a better experience there as well. Uh, one thing that this system does extremely well is it manages your speed for predictive cruise control exceptionally. And that's where you're gonna get the best fuel economy is by utilizing your cruise control so that the system can do what the system is designed to uh, do. And we are gonna integrate that in with our standard N2 module that's on the LT chassis. Uh, that comes standard with a five-year subscription, and that's gonna give you not only the topography that we need to know when a hill is coming up or when we're cresting a grade, uh, but also be able to integrate better with all those other functionalities um, from that standpoint. One other thing I wanna call out here on the transmission, we do have a standard integrated oil cooler on the transmission case itself. It's important to note that it's integrated into the case because that means that we're not taking fluid out of the case of the transmission delivering it to an external cooler or driving it all the way up to the radiator. Mm -hmm. Everything is contained. There's stainless steel lines that poured onto the backside of the engine. So even the routing for the coolant being supplied to the cooler is very minimal. Okay. Um, we do have standard PTO offerings now as well. So the transmission engine and PTO are all built in Huntsville, Alabama. And one thing that is great about this is this takes away a level of complexity for bodybuilders. So they no longer have to worry about integrating a PTO onto an existing transmission. We can order this directly from the factory with the PTO installed. And what's also awesome about this is a factory installed PTO will match the warranty of the transmission. 
So on an LT chassis, for example, that's five years, 750,000 miles on the transmission as well as your PTO. Are you putting this in the vocational applications then? Is that, I mean, it's suited for that as well? Yes, so that's another great aspect of it. We are integrating this into all of our Class 8 chassis. Okay. So while you see this being a over-the-road solution here, we're also going to be launching it in our vocational HX620 chassis this year. That'll happen in Q2. And that means that opening it up to vocational applications like dump mixers, um, heavy haul applications, all of that is in play now as well. And you have the same simple solution for each of those applications. And when you look at the vocational market, that's where the after treatment and engine solution is gonna make even bigger inroads because of high idle times that you might experience in those types of applications. Do you have, is there a, a manual shift mode or option? I mean, I know you should let it do the shifting, but in those cases where you get into maybe some of those heavy haul situations or just you want to, you know, the driver wants to select the gear, can I go ahead and do that? Yeah, so we still have the same modes of traditional automated transmissions that you see out there today. We have drive, manual mode, we have reverse with a uh, creeping function. So you put it into driver reverse, take your foot off the pedal, it automatically begins to transition into vehicle motion. Um, but we also have some other smart features like precision maneuvering mode. So with that, we are able to desensitize the throttle pedal and it behaves more like a clutch pedal when the manual uh, transmission days. So if that driver needs to back the final three feet into a dock or into a paver, he can have extreme control and confidence to be able to do that without looking like a rookie and smashing up a trailer or a kingpin. So one other aspect that is unique to the T14 as well versus other automated transmissions on the market is we actually utilize an electronic clutch actuator for the engagement and disengagement of the clutch. So it's right here on the transmission. It's a very simple design with a worm gear on a shift rod that's going forward and aft to engage and disengage that clutch. But what's great about it is now you have a very fast, precise shifting of the transmission from gear to gear yeah. that allows for very smooth engagement of the clutch from a stop. But also what it allows us to do is we are able to eliminate the auxiliary air tank on the chassis as well. So you don't okay. have that additional need for air to operate the transmission. Oh, I we see. still do use air to shift the gears, but it uses about 75% less air than your traditional automated transmission. Do you have any idea, I mean, how that impacts uh, shift speed as well? Are you able to shift around the gears a little bit faster and smoother to maintain that, that RPM range? 100%, and we talked a little bit about that 13th to 14th direct drive to overdrive shifting. Yeah. Because that ECA is so fast on its shift capability and it's still so smooth, that becomes very negligible in terms of feel to the driver. So it's able to go from 13th to 14th with very little feel. Awesome, thanks so much. Absolutely.